As the sun dawns on the caterpillar's cocoon, its metamorphosis is complete, and it emerges the beautiful butterfly it was always meant to be. But what if we could apply that logic to video games? And what a better place to start than with Metamorphosis? I mean, the title alone has to mean we're on the right track. Metamorphosis is a game that's based on the Franz Kafka story. The game really has nothing to do with it other than the main character's name is the same and you turn into a bug. But we're getting way ahead of ourselves story-wise here. Let's back up a second. The game was developed by Ovid Works, you know, the same people who made Inner Cosmos. Oh yeah, them. Now I've seen a lot of reviews online saying that this is a great game but only for a certain crowd, so I'm guessing they didn't mean whatever the f**k this is then. Well, starting up the game you get the title screen and, huh, that is one odd subtitle for the game. So you play as Gregor Samsa who's waking up in bed. Now right off the bat, I don't like whoever did the voiceover for this guy. It sounds like they gave him the directions to sound like he was really whiny but also drunk. Ah, my poor head. Ah. Anyways, you're at your friend's house and you're starting to make your way out of the room, and I guess these photos look familiar? These ones, right here, this. Um, it might be time to find some new friends, my dude. So you make your way down this hall with these really unsettling pictures. I will say some of them are really cool art though, but anyways, you get into this room where you're now two feet tall. And rather than worry about that, he's worried about getting to work on time. Priorities, I guess. This, however, leads into my favorite line of the game. Can it be that I'm a bug? This guy is one dedicated friend though. All he wants to do now is find his friend, even though he's a bug, so let's do that, I guess. So there's some light platforming elements to get through here, and have I ever mentioned how good I am at video games? Well, once we're through that area, we fall into a letter. Okay, I get we just turned into a bug, but I'm honestly confused now whether this is all just some weird dream, or it's just anything can happen and there are no rules now. The section of going through the letter is really cool, however, I just hate that from now on you speak like this. I get how they're trying to show you that you're changing into a bug, but having to listen to this through the entire game just kind of gets on my nerves. So it turns out you've been turned into a bug by this organization called The Tower, but hey, guess what? They can change you back if you do some work for them. Sounds like a trustworthy organization to me. And now this guy, being the workaholic that he is, decides, sounds like a good deal to me, let's go ahead and just work for The Tower. So we exit the letter and find, Jesus Christ! I guess this is Joseph, the man that all our hopes for help rest in, so we're doomed. You have to wake Joseph up, but plot twist, somebody else is in his room licking books? Someone actually made the conscious decision to program this in the game and be like, yep, that needs to be here. So we wake Joseph up and get ready to see a really realistic cutscene of somebody waking up with a stranger in their bedroom. Preposterous. Unprecedented. This is unheard of. Who the heck are you? Um, definitely not a robber. This is preposterous, an outrage, absolutely unheard of. To be fair though, it's not like Joseph is really that smart. You just stand there and stare at me. Yep, he's really staring at you, man. But I mean, come on, you don't trust that guy. He's got such a trustworthy face and doesn't look suspicious at all. Never mind, there is something completely wrong with that guy. All while this is going on, you're trying to work your way up to a better advantage point to get Joseph's attention so he can help you, and that's when you run into another bug who's on his way to the tower, and just absolutely shocks Gregor that he can talk, even though he himself is a talking bug. Meanwhile, checking back in with the adventures of Joseph. Oh god, look at him go! Oh, and he's down, but gets back up and is on the move again. So in short, these men break into Joseph's house, assault him, and then he gets arrested. Or, I'm sorry, arrested. You are arrested. Oh, yes, it sure looks that way. Well, at least Joseph's being sensible about all this. So we climb around a bit more and up onto this toast, and I guess I wasn't supposed to do that, because now I'm dead. <laughs> Just look at that, and people say video games aren't art. Oh my god! Perfect line delivery. Well, as the plot of the three idiots continues to play out, we work our way further into the walls and find ourselves another bug friend. And it looks like somebody's been keeping up on current events. 
So we have to follow him, and I don't want to play this game anymore. I hate the way the bugs walk in this game. They're just so floppy and gross, and it just is not pleasant to look at at all. So moving on a bit further, we come across this bug town with this ship we have to get on. But in order to board it, we first have to get papers. So in order to get the papers, you have to head to this guy's house. Ah yes, that's exactly how I listen to music too. So in order to get our papers, we have to turn off the record player, so we climb inside of it and find bugs dancing? We also find this bug telling the best jokes. This would be me if I was turned into a bug, wouldn't it? But anyways, we shut off the record, and now this guy has a visitor who turns out to be Joseph looking for legal help. From this guy. Yep, he's gonna win that case for sure. Well, it seems in order to get our papers and help Joseph, we have to get into this guy's desk. Once inside, though, I feel like this man has no right handling any legal documents if this is how he keeps them. So once we get to the papers, we get to float on them like magic and get this nightmare fuel. So now that we have our papers, we head up these magic drawers, which are just so annoying to climb up, and head into whatever this place is. I will say this area gives me major Harry Potter vibes, though. So you jump around on some more papers, go into this furnace area that's really annoying to try and figure out how to get out of, and then you finally send out your paperwork. It was here that I kind of started to lose track of what was going on with Joseph's story and his paperwork. It's kind of hard to keep track of that when you got all this going on. But we're finally ready to set sail, so we hop aboard the ship and fly past Joseph swatting at ghosts. You then come to this other bug town where you have to turn on this movie projector for him, takes a really long time and is really confusing on what you're actually supposed to do here. But once when you finally get that done, you're able to hop into the movie. And we are finally at the tower now and found our father at the front desk? Holy crap, it really is my dad! Yeah, so you just kind of move on from the fact that your dad's here and then go find Gustav who runs the tower. Turns out old Gus boy here is the one who turned you into a bug so that way you can make a ruling on Joseph's case. All you have to do is go to the verdict box, make a ruling, and then you'll be human again. But on the way, we run into this smoking bug lady who tells us if we want to be human again, we're going to have to rule a death penalty in Joseph's case. So the only way to save both of us is to destroy the tower. So you go burn Joseph's documents, and this makes Gussy Boy mad at you, so he ships you off to prison. You escape prison, and for some reason, the tower self-destruct button is in the prison. Seems like some bad planning there, but... Of course I push it, and now you have to run for your life. We escape through this painting to find the vaping bug lady, and... I guess I got the bad ending? Fine, I'll just kill Joseph then. Well, it turns out old Gusto is still mad at you about this. He says you faked your forms and ships you back off to prison again. So once again, you escape prison, destroy the tower, only this time it's a different painting you escape through, and this one actually leads you back into the starting room. But, once when you open the door, the two goons are just waiting for you. So there's no good ending then? I get that this game is full of allegories, but I don't like it. The controls are just awkward, and it's really hard to tell where you're going to land a lot of times when you're doing platforming sections. It's also really confusing on where you go half the time. Some of the visuals are cool, but overall, I just wasn't a fan of this game. So I guess the only question to ask is, ultimately, did this game cause me to have a metamorphosis? No, 